Hello everyone and welcome to Bobbin's Let's Play Minecraft. Today I'm starting a new series featuring the Infinity Involved Skyblock uh, mod pack. A lot of you have seen this done before by other YouTubers. Some of them do a great job, a much better job than I will actually do in this series most likely. However, hopefully if you're watching this series what you're interested in is seeing something a little different uh, because everybody does it differently and that will appeal to you. Let me just start by saying that I have added one mod to this mod pack. You can see it on the screen now. I have added the Stellar Sky mod. This mod adds a beautiful realistic sky with moving planets and the Milky Way and the sky and, and a slightly different sun and moon. And uh, I happen to like the appearance of that and that's great. You probably won't be able to see too much of that on YouTube because of the video resolution. But what you can see on the screen and you will be able to see on this is the uh, time counter which starts on day 199. It's currently 8.28 in the morning. This will allow you, if you are sort of playing along, to uh, check your progress against mine if that's of interest to you. There's not a competition here, uh, but I've often found it interesting myself to see how the way that I did things compared to the way the other guy did things and how much... Uh, progress I was able to make in the same amount of time and um, so so you can you can you can do that if you like I will leave the time counter up it will show actual time played I'm not on a server I'm single player so if I if I walk away from the game I can shut it down um, so let's talk a little bit about this sky block we've all played sky blocks before I think this one uses X Nilo just like so many others there are some different approaches in this sky block from some of the others. It's really what's different about a, uh, a mod pack that's often of interest in my view because really a lot of the mechanics of sky blocking are the same. We're, since it is an X Nilo sky block, we're going to start out with a tree and we're going to get saplings and we're eventually going to get a silkworm and build a sieve and start crushing and sieving cobblestone to get ores and so on. That is not going to be different. I'm not going to dwell on that stuff. I will talk about it just a little bit for anybody who isn't perfectly familiar. Um, if you have some questions about something, feel free to post in the comments and I will attempt to address them. I will probably address them in the comments in the short term instead of in the videos because there will be a little bit of a backlog on the videos. In this particular mod pack, the uh, focus is on the progression, which is, it's intended to be sort of an expert type uh, sky block. You're sort of expected to know how some of the progression will um, work and figure it out, and how some of the mods work and what they're capable of. Uh, just to give an example of something that comes up early, a lot of the recipes have been made, have been changed to make them more complex or to require machines that, that you can only get to at certain points in the progression. One of the earliest things that we'll have to do here is create a bucket. And in this mod pack, creating a bucket involves first creating a coke oven, which is um, quite a long process. We will not have to do that. It, a coke oven, the materials for it, requires something in the general neighborhood of 130 uh, cobblestone processed in various ways. Thankfully we won't have to do that because in this mod pack they did start us with a lava source and a water source. So as long as we don't lose these, which I have done before, it's dreadful, uh, as long as we don't lose them then we will have a uh, head start on creating cobblestone from a cobble generator and we won't have to, to sieve a lot of dirt in order to do that. But the key point is that a lot of the recipes are harder. This does not have a quest book. You're sort of on your own to set your path. There's no simple achievements, there's no HQM, which of course since there's no HQM that means there's no quest rewards to help you on your way as well, so, so there's that which means that you're really not getting just a huge amount by getting this lava. Uh, it does help with the early progression, but it's the only thing they're going to give you other than this chicken stick, which we'll talk about a little bit. We are standing on nine blocks of dirt. I will try to rescue all nine. I'm not always successful, 
but um, usually I can get eight or nine of them. So when you're setting your path, there are some achievements in this mod pack. Um, if we come out here, click through here some, you can see some of the mods that are in here. This tab that says Skyblock has the Skyblock achievements, the first of which is to get a bucket. Then there is a tech progression path, which is right here, and a magic progression path. I'm probably mostly going to focus on the tech progression. I'm more familiar with the mods. Uh, I like it a little better in some ways. There are some, some down here that will show up regardless of how you do it. I sort of say regardless. I really think this is more of a tech thing, but... Uh, then there are some sort of ultimate achievements here. Craft a creative cell, craft a creative tank. These have recipes that are absolutely insane. So if we were to go here to the creative energy cell, uh, you've got to ha create an extreme crafting table and all of the stuff to go into it. So obviously it's very involved. I don't even know if I'm going to get even remotely close to that before this is done, but I may not go through the whole thing so we'll see it just time permits so that is basically what's going on there are no things that really make it just a ton easier there's no um, tree growth simulator to let you twerk your trees you've got to actually bone meal them they did give us some bone meal to start with that's good there's no vein miner like I said you you could you could add these mods if you really wanted to the only thing I've added is the Starry Sky mod, which is generally of a cosmetic nature and won't change the gameplay experience very much, if at all. So let me get just get started here by getting some saplings and a tree, and I'm going to start growing trees and making the platform bigger. As I sort of go along, one of the things that I'm going to do here is I'm going to record the whole thing, but I'm going to severely edit some of this so that it's not so long. So, oh, we lost our first log. Um, so, there will be a lot of skips in this first video, maybe even the first two videos, but I will um, sort of try to adjust that as I go along and try to get something that looks somewhat decent. One of the things that, that you're going to notice, very first thing that, that makes this a little more hardcore, is how much wood you get from logs. You only get two instead of four. And if you were to take and make sticks out of it, you're only going to get two sticks for two planks. So really a log only makes two planks or two sticks, not four planks or eight as it does in vanilla. Crafting table isn't changed. And of course, I'm going to make the crafting station. And we're going to start putting down planks. The mob spawn is very vanilla. I, I've already mentioned that, but we're not going to run into cases where mobs can spawn, let's say, regardless of light level or um, right next to you or anything like that. Uh, I'm not setting slabs down on the lower half to prevent mob spawn because I'm just going to light everything up very nicely. Uh, let's see where we can go with this. So still losing some materials here, but definitely getting started. So far, good luck on not getting a giant oak tree. Giant oak tree gives a lot of wood, of course, but it's it's such a pain to climb up in there and, and try to break all those blocks. If I'm going to get a giant oak tree, why couldn't they have given me a spruce?
All right, it's time to try rescuing the dirt. What I usually do to rescue the dirt is I go ahead and set some blocks that are on the lower half, and then I get right up on the edge of the dirt block and dig it. And as I fall just a little bit, I almost always catch the dirt. Um, do be on the edge and not the center. It's not the goal here to fall through the world and die and lose whatever stuff I'm carrying. Which I could actually just go and put this stuff in the uh, chest so that I lose as little as possible if that happens. That I have never had happen. Maybe this will be the first time. Hopefully not. So great, I got all nine dirt. Next goal is to get enough wood to go ahead and build some crafting tables to start a uh, cobble gin with. I actually tr don't try to be very, um, uh, very brave with how I build my cobble gin. It's pretty straightforward just to grow a few extra trees, set up some crafting tables to put the lava on, and and go from there. And mine will actually be a very plain cobble gin nothing trying any special tricks to conserve materials there's just no real reason to do that it's all wood um, so uh, I'm probably going to cut out some video here and I will be back when I actually have that ready to go alright so I've got some crafting tables built and some extra wood and I'm ready to go ahead and start my uh, cobble gen this is just a manual one for now I'll have to dig out all the cobble myself the, um, the other thing I've gotten in order to get started here is I am going to need some means of digging a little bit of cobble. And so I went ahead and made a wooden pickaxe. The vanilla tools do sort of work in this mod pack. Uh, you will want to go to Tinker's Tools pretty quickly, but in this case, just to get started, the wooden pickaxe will give me... It says durability 5, and if you count them, that means I will actually get 6 uses out of it before it breaks. That will get me just a tiny bit of cobblestone to start, enough to make a uh, cobblestone pickaxe. I also went ahead and made a crook. Haven't used it yet. Um, this will allow me to get a silkworm from the... I'll use it to break the leaves on the trees and I'll get a silkworm and then I can put the silkworm on the leaves and, and it will gradually transform them into infested leaves which can be broken with the crook again in order to get more silkworms and more importantly to get string. I'm going to need string in order to make a sieve because once I get the cobble I'm going to start crushing it up and I'll use the sieve to, to get ores. So that's the, the short story for people who have never done ex nihilo before. So let's just get started over here with the crafting tables. This is actually a very safe um, cobble gin design. It does not, it uses more materials than is strictly necessary, but it's all wood, so it's not really such a huge thing. I should have some slabs somewhere. So you need something that the lava won't burn. That's what these crafting tables are for. They are a wooden item that is not affected by fire. You'll get a fire on top of them, but it won't actually destroy them. And then we're going to need a place to put the water. And for the water, you can just use conventional um, wooden resources. Not, not any big deal. 
Here I'm just using slabs, just like the rest of my area. Now, I'm getting my lava and I'm getting my water. I strongly suggest that you be very careful with these because if you lose them, you will be having to go down that route that I mentioned earlier where you're really going to need to deal with, unfortunately, um, having to go and build a coke oven before you can place any um, blocks of lava and uh, water. Actually, getting these resources is not that hard. It's the moving them that's hard. So I place my water first. I'm going to place my lava in here. And where it touches the water, I get cobblestone. So let's dig out just a little bit. And you will lose some. It's somewhat unavoidable. But I've gotten three, which I can use to make a wooden pickaxe now. Or a, a stone pickaxe. So I'll go ahead and finish using up the wooden one, and then I will start the stone one. Now I don't like fire spawning up there like you just saw, so what I normally am going to do is I'm going, once I get a little bit of stone, I'm going to craft some stone slabs, and very carefully so I don't destroy my lava block, I'm going to place these stone slabs over the top of these crafting tables, because although they don't actually um, get consumed by the fire, they'll support fire on top of them. These slabs will um, completely are immune to fire, so we're, we're good on that. So this is now done, so I have cobble gin. My next step is going to be to use hammers directly on it to get caught or to get gravel. The chicken stick is nice for this one. It's faster and it's not consumed as compared to, let's say, a wooden or a stone hammer you might make at this point. It also, unlike those hammers, will put the gravel directly in your inventory, so there are no losses even though you're using this sort of cobble gen. So it's not like you saw with the cobblestone where it kind of bounces around and it can bounce into the lava or down the hole that the water is going down. So that's, the, that's one of the nice uses of the chicken stick. It does actually make clucking noises and sometimes it spawns chickens and the chickens it spawns will probably die immediately in this particular scenario, but sometimes you can actually get a chicken out of it. You don't need that. Um, there are other ways of getting chickens later on. But I'm going to go ahead and start building my platform and um, getting some resources, because my next major goal here is to go ahead and automate this cobble gen, because I don't want to have to sit... I want to make a, a platform that's mostly going to be out of cobble, but I don't want to have to manually dig it. To do that, I'm going to need to get some resources. Specifically, I'm going to have to sift enough gravel to get three diamonds, and I'm going to have to sift enough dust to get 12 redstone. There are some other resources involved. If you get those resources, though, you will probably have the rest of it. Alright, I'm back, and another dark and stormy night is beginning. Uh, I have a tree here with all the leaves infested. I need to get 18 string to proceed. So I'm just going to crook these leaves. And hopefully this one tree will produce 18 string, but it is not looking promising so far. So it looks like I might be just short of 18. When I get the wood chopped down, I'll check around the ground see if maybe I missed a couple. If not, I'll have to grow and infest another tree.
So it looks like that wasn't enough. Let's come over here. We did get replacement silkworms. That's good. Hop down a tree. Bone meal it. Oh, and it's huge. All right. Well, um, this will take a while to invest. Uh, so I will be back when it's ready to, when I've got 18 string. I may actually not wait for this tree to completely infest. Alright, so my giant tree is still infesting, but I do have my 18 string by getting some of the lower leaves. Um, I did set up some torches, so it's a little brighter out here, but of course it's still pouring rain and uh, dark. So, I'm ready to make my sieve. I need 18 string because I have to make two of these things, silk meshes. I'll make those, put that through there, and make my oak sieve. Now, as you can see over here in the chest, I've already got a ton of gravel. I'm going to sift gravel until I get three diamonds. Then I'm going to convert anything that's left. If there is anything left, I might actually have to go get more gravel. Um, I will convert anything that's left into dust. And then I will sift dust until I get 12 redstone. And when that is all done, I will be right back. Alright, as you can see on my hotbar, I've gotten my three diamonds. I actually do still have plenty of gravel left. I got a little bit lucky on getting my diamonds quickly. Um, so right now I'm ready to go ahead and crush up the remainder of this into dust to get the redstone and I realized that I needed to show you something. This is the recipe for the regular X nylo hammer and I'm setting up 10 of them here and I'm going to go ahead and make all 10 right away. The X Compressum mod, which is the same one that adds the chicken stick, uh, has a nice feature in that it will let you make what's called a compressed hammer. And this is like a block of hammers, so we're going to put 9 hammers in here and we'll get this compressed stone hammer back. This will compress crushed ores. So if I come, or compressed ores rather. So if I take this, not ores, gravel and sand and other resources. So if I take this and um, make compressed gravel out of it, I can take this and put it down just like that. And I can use this compressed stone hammer on it. And each one I break will give me nine sand. So this is really a much faster way of hammering these sorts of resources. Now the reason I made a tenth hammer is because I've got these um, broken copper ore, this, this, these broken ores in here. And I'm going to want to break these down as well before I take and smelt them. You can smelt the iron ore gravel. But you get more out of it if you take it and um, break it down into these. So I had I had 24 of these, now I've got 25, which is actually, usually it does a little better than that. But I can take the sand and I can take in and crush it down. And I can keep doing this until I get dust. But you need the regular hammer for this. The chicken stick will not do this. It will simply break the sand and you'll pick up a sand ore. The um, compressed stone hammer might do it, but why would you waste nine hammers when... when th because it's going to wear out at that rate. Um, why would you waste nine hammers instead of one? So, um, I will be back when I get my redstone, but for now I'm going to be taking this stuff and I'll be using this hammer to break it all the way down into dust before I sieve it. So I'll be back when, when I get my redstone. Alright, I got my resources. Let's see if I have what I need to go ahead and proceed with a better cobblestone solution. So I'm going to need a diamond pickaxe and I'm going to need let's see I'm going to need some of these pipes from Extra Utilities. And with those pipes, I'm going to make a um, an item transfer node. Don't quite have that right because it involves 
a redstone block. So I have my transfer node items and the reason for the diamond pickaxe is because while this in while normally this recipe requires an iron pickaxe in the center it's been made a little tougher here it requires the diamond one so I think that is um, all I need for this stuff let's put these items away um, incidentally this furnace this is a slab furnace the regular furnace recipe has been changed and requires a ton of cobblestone the old regular furnace recipe the vanilla furnace recipe actually makes a slab furnace right now which is not a crafting component so you do need eight cobblestone to make this slab furnace uh, it works just like a regular one it's just half height but the regular furnace you need I guess 72 cobblestone for or something like that so obviously we're not going to make it until we have an automated cobblestone solution which we're about to get over here so this is the intermediate block with lava on this side concealed under these slabs and water on this side it actually does not matter that the water is flowing rather than a still block so let's put our transfer node on here and a chest I made for this over on the water side so it doesn't burn up and we'll put the world interaction upgrade in there and it will start producing cobblestone right away so we've got our cobblestone solution in place with the cobblestone solution in place I think this is probably a good wrapping up point what I'm going to do between episodes is I'm going to build out my platform just a very brief discussion before I go on what I'm going to do with the platform I like to have a safe platform, meaning I can't dig through it with accidentally. If if I if I dig through it, it's because I wanted to dig through it. I also want a pretty good sized platform for setting stuff up on. So my initial platform here is going to be 29 by 29, which is a pretty large platform. I like that size because you can lay out the lights in it on on in a really nice fashion for getting it all spread out. You will see that when I come back in the next episode. In order to make it so that I can't accidentally dig through it, it's going to be made from two layers. And the top layer is going to be cobblestone. I'm going to use chisel to make some nicer looking cobblestone, but it's still ultimately going to be cobblestone. The bottom layer needs to be something that if you dug through the top layer you wouldn't just immediately dig through the bottom layer as well so you got a couple of choices on that one really nice solution is to have obsidian for the bottom layer because it takes forever to dig through that obviously at this point I can't afford obsidian I don't I don't have the resources to go and mass produce it on that scale what I can do is I can use something that requires a different tool so I'm actually going to continue this wooden platform and layer on the cobblestone on top. Since the wood is slow to dig with a pickaxe, it, it's fast to dig with an axe, the dissimilar tools means that it's harder to accidentally dig through it just because you have a fast pickaxe that, that will rip up cobblestone immediately, which will eventually be the case. So essentially I'm going to build a 29 by 29 platform between episodes that has wood on the bottom and this is the starting point for it right here and then has cobblestone on top and I will set up the lights in the way that I want to set them up and get it all nice looking and in the next episode you will see the result of that. So until next time enjoy playing Minecraft and I will see you then. Thanks for watching.